elephants and bees. What does one have to do with the other? Rangers in the Kruger National Park in South Africa have made an important discovery. Besides loving fresh fruit, there is another astonishing fact. Elephants fear bee stings, and this is helping protect trees in the park. The rising elephant population destroyed too many of the park's marula trees when they go for the delicious marula fruits. So the industrious insects have now been appointed the park's chief tree protectors. You don't believe me? See for yourself. In the middle of the South African bush, zoologists Ronnie Makokule and Robin Cook have set up 50 beehives. The colonies are positioned right next to the Kruger National Park. For more than a year now, the two conservationists have been testing whether honeybees can protect selected trees inside the park. Believe it or not, these bees can ward off the park's largest residents, elephants. Just like people, elephants don't like getting stung. They also have an acute sense of smell and hearing. So one hint of a beehive and they're off. And the reason we're doing that is that in our protected areas here in South Africa, we've got a buildup of elephant densities and concern over the impact that they may be having on our large tree species. And so we're trying to find ways that we can mitigate the effects that elephants have on trees. And thereby placing honeybees in these trees, we're hoping that we can find a new method to actually protect the trees from elephant impact. While elsewhere in Africa, the elephant population is in decline, in South Africa, their numbers are growing. Here, nature reserves are fenced in and equipped with man-made watering holes. Protected and well provided for, the elephant population has flourished, so much so that they've become a problem. The elephants strip trees and shrubs naked, often uprooting them in the process. Cook's Bee Project is a new approach in park management. In the past, a large number of elephants were simply culled. Nearly 17,000 were shot dead in Kruger National Park to keep the population stable and protect the vegetation. So when it comes to managing the effects that elephants have on large trees, there's been a mindset shift from controlling elephant numbers themselves, as was previously thought, to, to mitigating the effects that they actually have on the trees. With the beehives, the zoologists are hoping to control the elephants' movements by keeping them moving. If the animals stay in one place too long, they can inflict extensive damage. But above all, the conservationists say bees are the perfect way of keeping elephants away from individual objects of particular importance, like trees that have birds nesting in them. In the villages around the park, people have little experience with bees. Many are afraid of them, an attitude Ronnie Makukule is working to change. He plans to start keeping bees in his village and to train some of the local residents as beekeepers. Starting a bee project in this community will help uh, the community to make um, income out of bees by also starting their own project through bees and also producing honey that they can sell in the supermarkets. Back inside the park, the conservationists have found another way of reducing elephant numbers in problem areas. They've laid dry a number of watering holes. That means the elephants have to keep moving to find fresh water, relieving the pressure on the local ecosystem. But smaller parks don't have that option, so there's growing interest in the results of Cook's experiments with bees. He believes it's a groundbreaking method with huge potential. But we would love to see it applied to new species, particularly species which elephants are after, such as the baobab species. And then to see if it can be applied to our other projects, such as the vulture nest project, to see if we can protect trees with vulture nests in them using African honeybees and whether that relationship will or will not work. They should soon find out. The first hives are already in place. If it all works out, the bees could in the future not only protect trees, but also the birds and animals that depend on the trees for their survival. What multi-talents these bees! But now to a completely different topic in far off London. No, it's not about Brexit. It's about a hotel, the Rubens in the Palace at central London. The hotel owners have turned a 350 square meter outer wall 
into a vertical garden. Not only that, Felicia, the hotel leaves no stone unturned to sensitize its guests to the environment. It encourages cycling or jogging and is trying to eliminate plastics. Apparently it works because people there have begun to ask especially for the gold green experiences, perhaps because an appetizing vegan afternoon tea is included. One would ordinarily expect leaves and petals in a garden but not along the wall of a hotel. The 350 square meter living wall is the main attraction of the Rubens Hotel. It promises guests a sustainable overnight experience. The living wall doesn't only look impressive, it also serves a purpose. So living wall gives us uh, the opportunity to support uh, insect and, and wildlife. It, it helps us reduce energy consumption by keeping the building cooler in, in the summer, warmer in the winter. It helps reduce localised drainage and it helps us contribute to uh, keeping a cleaner air for the, the local environment. By 2022, the Rubens wants to do away with all its plastics, for example, by doing without little giveaway shampoo bottles. Its Go Green initiative aims to help guests make their stay even more environmentally friendly. New research has shown just how harmful tourism is for the environment. According to estimates by the World Tourism Organization, the tourism industry contributes about 8% to worldwide man-made carbon emissions. The Cubic Hotel in London has also dedicated itself to reducing these numbers. In 2013, it transformed an old office building in Whitechapel and recycled 80% of the original material in the process. Instead of ordinary rooms, guests can stay in pop-up rooms, so-called QB, that contain a movable bed and bathroom. With solar panels on the roof, water-saving shower heads and environmentally friendly products, the hotel wants to promote sustainability. Even the mattresses are made of biodegradable material. The aim is to encourage the visitors to be more conscious of their actions. That's what John Proctor, the director of Green Tourism, advocates too. Some of these things do carry a price, uh, a price challenge. Um, but if in the, in the overall, because uh, a lot of the hotels are focusing on efficiency, water savings, energy savings, that can be balanced so they can do some of the other good things, the, the, the maybe more expensive options. And if they can take the consumer with them, the consumer's showing evidence that they are willing to pay a little bit more for a sustainable product, if it's genuine. Many seem eager to make this work. Eco-friendly tourism appears to be growing more popular. Now, all we need to do is learn how to forgo little luxuries once in a while for the sake of the environment.